Hi, welcome to Richman Paul Motors. For new viewers of this channel, this is a motors based channel where we review, test drive and uh, also uh, repair cars. So in today's video, it's all about air conditioning. And the car that I'm using here is a Vauxhall Astra, but it doesn't actually matter if it's an Astra or another car, the principles are all the same. Um, this happens to be a twin top. And again, it doesn't matter if you've got the hatchback or the estate version. If it's a Vauxhall in particular you're looking at, then uh, this is, is, will all be the same on all these Astras. So first off, I'm going to show you how to test both in the slightly more uh, complex way using a manifold gauge here, but also um, I thought I'd show you a bit more of a, a basic DIY uh, way of doing it. Now, you might have seen things like um, these gases in, in shops such as Halfers, etc. And you might be wondering um, if you can do it yourself. Now, part of doing it yourself is has to test, so I'm gonna show you how to test it here. Um, and I'm gonna actually use, when you use those gases to do a top up, I'm gonna, um, you have these uh, guns here. Now, just so you're aware, this is for R1234 YF gas, and this is for R134A, um, so, depending on what vehicle uh, you actually have, depends on what gas you use in the car. They're not interchangeable. Um, so I'm going to go through here. So first off, open up your bonnet. Now in the car, look for your air con pipe work. So I've got one here. So that would be one pipe. The other one on this is actually underneath this, um, this radiator panel. Uh, now you have a low and a high side, so it's important to get uh, which side you need. Take this grill off. So this grill happens to be like a Torx bit. We're just taking off screws for the grill. So it just pops straight up. So you get your pressure gauge. On this, the uh, low side is here, and that's the high side. So you get your pressure gauge, and you just push on to the uh, end, and then you take your read in. Now, if you've got gas in the system, it will usually show up being somewhere in the low side. Um, this is showing that there's no gas at all in it. So if you're using one of these manifolds, again, make sure the end is screwed back. That goes on the low side. I'll show you here on the high side. Make sure it's back. And that's it clipped in place. Then all you do is you screw down to open the Schrader valve. Now, as you probably can see on this, it's showing zero gas on the left side, zero gas on the right side, so that would indicate a leak. If while running your engine, you've got the same pressure on either side, then that obviously would indicate that you've got a problem with your uh, compressor pump or your aircon pump. If you've got a lot of pressure in your high side, but it's low on the low side, then that would actually indicate that you've got a blockage either in the um, expansion tube or um, possibly in your uh, dry filter. Now I've already investigated the fault beforehand and I noticed that it's um, the condenser radiator here on the front and if you can see it's all broken up so I already know that so I've ordered a new um, condenser radiator from Autodoc. I found that that happened to be the cheapest so I'll put a link in the description below and uh, you can check out their prices. Now, just a word of warning, if you're buying from Autodoc, us in England, and we're used to sort of next day delivery, you're not gonna get that from Autodoc, um, but usually the prices are good. So if you don't mind waiting a bit, then uh, you can save some money. So please check out my links below. And uh, let's replace this uh, condenser radiator. So like I said, I've got the uh, radiator here from Autodoc. So it cost me approximately 45 pounds. So the prices do fluctuate. Like I say, do check them out. So I ordered a new radiator, also with the dryer. So that looks 
pretty much in good condition. So first thing, remove the, um, the fan. So just undo this nut. Keep pushing these tabs in. So now uh, the fan's out of the way, we can get on about removing the pipes. So an E12, there's the bolt for the aircon hose, and down there, if you can see, there's the bolt, the holes on the other hose. One up here. So this is where your pipe work connects to the uh, condenser. Of course, only do this if you've, uh, if you've got no gas in the system. And the other bolts here, these are uh, E8. So if you can see, there's the bolt for the top of the radiator and put my finger on the one for the bottom. That's on the right hand side. On the left hand side, we've got one here at the top. And the other one is down here. But the easiest way to see it is if you actually go through, if you can actually look through, there it is going through the grill. Right, now to remove the bottom bolts. Now I find if you have a, a long extension on, you can go through the bumper. So just disconnect the plug as well. And out comes the radiator. So 14 mil, just remove the sensor. Transfer that to the new radiator or the new condenser. Sorry. Okay, so what I found out is actually there is two different size radiators, but I've now bought the right one. So I've just taken the fan off just to make it a bit easier to get it in. And uh, so here's the new one. So this one's um, lower in height and a bit wider than what the other one was. So just take out the, the bung. Obviously I've swapped over the, um, the sensor. So there's the bottom one, and here's the top one.
So that's the bottom left hand side. Top left hand side. Top right hand side. And if you look down there, that's the one on the bottom. Again, it might be easier to see it going through the grill. So that's it going through the grill. So now we've got the condenser in place, time to refit the fan. Put the clip back in place. So, now the fan's in place. So just make sure all your clips are in, and then that's the um, condenser replaced. So all we need to do now is we need to put on a vacuum to make sure we get all the moisture out of the uh, aircon system. So you get your vacuum gauge and you put the low side on your um, low side port. Your high side on your high side port. The middle one here to your vacuum pump. So with a vacuum pump, when you buy them, they're not that expensive really. But when you buy them, um, they usually don't come with any oil, so you have to factor in and purchase some oil as well. So obviously, make sure you've got uh, enough oil in your um, vacuum pump. So you screw down your connectors to open the Schrader valves. So I'll show you a close up of the gauges. Turn the vacuum pump on and switch on your vacuum pump. Open up the the air to the system. So we allow this to run for, say, an hour, hour and a half. Make sure all the uh, air is out to the system. As you can see here, we're in the negative figures on both sides. So this is creating a vacuum inside your system, removing all that moisture that would be in the air. Obviously, while this is running, you also want to make sure that you don't have any leaks from any of the fittings either on the pump itself or the manifold. So this pump's now been working for about an hour, so it's time to um, turn off the system. So before we turn off the pump, we check that the vacuum is off to here. So we don't want the air escaping back to the pump. Button that up. Now we can turn off the pump and we'll leave that for about another hour just to check that there's no air coming into the system. So it's now been a, an hour, about an hour and 20 minutes actually. Um, and as you can see, the vacuum on both the low side and the high side is showing exactly the same. So that sort of proves to us that we've got no air leaks in the system. So the repair we did by changing the condenser um, has worked. Right, so now we've verified the system is all uh, leak free, it's time to get it regassed. So there's two ways to obviously um, put gas in your car. You can buy those gas canisters like I showed you from Halford, um, but they're about 420 grams of gas in the car. The car behind needs 450 grams of gas. So you do the maths, that's two cylinders 
uh, two at 59 pounds, so you're talking about 118 pound. Yes, you do get a 10 pound um, refund back from the cylinder when you take, it, take the empty cylinder back, but you're looking at uh, two lots of 50 then, so you're looking at 100 pound. So the most economical way, and obviously the best way, is you actually get uh, one of these um, service areas behind, you know, they do the tyres and exhaust and air con gas, because you're actually filling up the system from scratch. It's not like you're just topping up like an extra 10%. Um, so you get one of these, they put the right amount of gas in and uh, you're there and done. So it makes economical sense to actually come to one of these garages rather than to try and do it yourself. So luckily enough, they've got the car outside, as you can see, uh, with these COVID times. So here we are just um, regassing the car.